Father, we thank you for the songs that have been sung. We thank you, God, for the prayers that have been prayed. We thank you for an opportunity to worship you in giving. And now as we look into your word, we ask that it will fall upon the good soil of our hearts, that we will live and grow thereby. We thank you for all these things. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We are into our second episode of our series entitled On the Run. Every time I say On the Run, I think of that, another old song. It's called Band on the Run. But I ain't going to sing that today. All right. We, in case you didn't know it, the month of May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And it just works out that as we are ending the month of May, we actually get to discuss someone that had a mental health situation occur in his life. So in this second episode, we're going to join the prophet Elijah, who finds himself who is fleeing from the wrath of Queen Jezebel. And as he hides in the wilderness, we will witness how God sustains Elijah, speaks to him in a still, small voice, and renews his purpose, reminding us that even in our moments of despair, that God provides strength and direction. If you remember in episode number one, we talked about Peter, and as we talked about Peter, we talked about the resurgence of redemption, how T Peter was restored after lying and saying he didn't know who Jesus was, how he was restored back to the leadership of the group of disciples. And so this week, if you will come along with me, I would like to call this one the Wilderness Whispers. The Wilderness Whispers. And our definitions for today are the first one is run. Run is to move in a hurry. Wilderness is a desert, a tract of land or region uncultivated and uninhabited by human beings, whether a forest or a wide barren plain. Whispers. Whispers is to address in a low voice. And then there's one more thing I wanted to throw in for today, and that is depression. Depression is a sinking of the spirits, a dejection, a, a state of sadness, a want of courage or animation. Let's go to Psalms 139 verses 7 through 12. This is the English Standard Version, and this is our base text for this entire series. David says, Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as the day, for darkness is as light to you. Our scripture for this episode is coming from 1 Kings, 19th chapter, verses 1 through 18. A little ride, but y'all hold on. We're going to be okay. I'm a pretty decent driver. Not a great driver, but pretty decent. You only feel a couple bumps. But anyway, well, don't, get, don't, get, don't get punched in the middle of service. All right. Ahab, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Mm. Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah, saying, 
So may the gods do to me and more also if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Then he was afraid and he arose and ran for his life and came to Beersheba, which belonged to Judah and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, it is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he laid down and slept under a broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said to him, arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. And he ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to her up the mount of God. There he came to a cave and lodged in it, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous of the Lord, the God, Lord of hosts. For the people of Israel forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and killed your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a low whisper. Mm -hmm. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars and killed your prophets with the sword. And I... Even I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said, Go, return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when you arrive, you shall anoint Hazel to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nishi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Saphat, of Abel Meholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazel... Shall Jehu put to death? And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elijah put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal, and every mouth that has not kissed him. Father, we thank you for your word. We ask that it will resonate in our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I went through that long dissertation because I want y'all to understand a little bit about Elijah. Elijah was a man that God had selected for a specific purpose. That specific purpose was to come against Ahab and Jezebel. If we remember from our stewardship that Elijah had to go to Ahab and say, because you acting so crazy, we're going to stop it from raining until I say differently. And it stopped raining. Now, Elijah, right before this in verse chapter number 18, we find the great battle of the gods. And we find out that Elijah said, I want you to bring all your priests up there. I'm going to bring myself and we're going to find out who the best man is. I've heard some pastors call it the showdown on the mount. Because it came and he said, if you're, we're going to prove today who is God. Whoever can make fire come down from heaven and take up the, uh, the sacrifice, that is who's going to be God. And the ball guys did all their things, and Elijah, being a good prophet that he is, said, well, maybe your God is sleeping, or maybe he's on vacation, or maybe he just ain't paying you no mind. 
But after he let them go for a little while, it came time and he had them pour water on top of his sacrifice and he poured more water and he had them dig a trench and it, it, the sacrifice was, tr was drenched in water. He said, Lord, prove yourself. The Lord proved himself. And when the people realized that Elijah was the right side to be on, they went in and they killed all the Baal prophets. Ahab, being the wimp, I mean, being the man that he was, <laughs> went and told his wife, honey, Elijah killed all your prophets. And Jezebel sent a messenger immediately to Elijah. Now, think about this really quickly. Think about this. Elijah's sitting up there celebrating. The people are celebrating that Jehovah is God. Yahweh is God. Yes, yes, celebrating, celebrating. This messenger works his way through and tells Elijah, I got a message for you from Jezebel. Mm. She said, tomorrow you're going to be dead, just like you killed her prophets. And it's said that Elijah was afraid. Mm -hmm. And this is the first point I want to bring out. That usually when we have a situation whereby we have a great victory, there is something coming to try to take that victory away. Mm -hmm. Something's coming after you. The other thing that we realize is the fact that when we are in the bestest of moods, that what ends up happening is something tries to upset us to take that bestest mood away. Mm. And as I said earlier, because this is mental health awareness month, I want you to recognize that this is the ebb and flow of life. Mm -hmm. Depression will show up and knock on your door. And then if you don't answer the door, he'll come and knock on the window. And if you don't answer the window, he'll look to see if you have a doggy door to see if he may be able to slide in through the doggy door. But depression is looking to come into your house. Depression wants to take away the motivation that you have. He wants to remove from you the hope that you have in you. Depression is looking to upset your momentum. We see it right here with Elijah, celebrating this great victory where he was used by God and God brought answered his prayer, pulled up the sacrifice, destroyed all of the enemies of Yahweh. And one word came to him. You're going to be dead tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And it says that he was afraid. Jumped up from the party and ran. Mm -hmm. Now, when they say ran, they don't mean he got into his car and drove down the street. This means he was moving one foot in front of the other, as we said, in a hurried fashion. And he ran for his life. He was trying to get away from depression, but depression was running right beside him. Yes. Whispering in his ear, you're going to be dead tomorrow. Yes. You're going to be dead tomorrow. And he gets to Beersheba, and he, he, he said, you know what, servant, you stay here. I, I just don't want to be around you right now. You just stay here. And he ran some more. Says he went another day's journey. And he got into the wilderness, the desolate place, the place where not. So depression has now set him up to be isolated in order to make him more depressed. Did you know that depression comes with a winding staircase? Did you know that depression will, when you start walking down those stairs, going deeper and deeper into his abode. He has a button that he can press and he'll make it into, instead of stairs, he'll make it into a slot. 
and he will bless you and he will slide you down as quickly as he possibly can until you go from depression to despair. Because that's how he works. And he's out there in the middle of that and he says, I just wish I could die. He says, it's enough now, Lord. Take my life for I'm no better than my father. He's just giving up. Wait a minute. Two days ago, dude, you were standing on the mount celebrating God doing this great thing. But when depression wraps his arms around you and catches your ear, he can take you from the highest high point and start you down to a very low position. And then he was so tired he fell asleep. Now I want to tell you, one of the best things when you are feeling depressed to do is get some rest. Allow your body to heal itself. God has designed a healing mechanism in your body, but we don't like to lay down long enough for it to happen. We always got things to do. We got places to be. We got people to see. We got things. We got, we got to do this. We got to do that. If you remember for about a year, I was talking to us about taking 10 minutes a day to relax and clear your mind. Some of y'all ain't made it past 10 seconds. I ain't talking about y'all in the room. I'm talking about y'all on the video. We have not done the things that allow our body to repair itself. If our body is not repairing itself, let me ask you this, have you ever driven a car and the oil was low? Mm -hmm. You knew the oil was low. And you said, I just need to do this little, little, little thing. Well, how about this? How about you not even knowing the oil is low? You driving down a backwoods highway in the 80s with no lights or nothing along the way trying to get to a class and next thing you know the car just cuts off on you. And we ain't had cell phones back then. You get a call and your bride says I'm somewhere on the highway along the highway and the car won't work. It's the only car you got. And the next thing you know, you jump in and get a friend to take you, you find a new locator, you find out that there was no oil in the car. And a certain person has her low flying pilot's license already, so it wasn't her driving the speed limit, I don't think. But anyhow, <laughs> we're not going to talk about that today. But our, my point is, Things can happen and we'll push a little bit further and say, I can do a little bit more. But when you're going and dealing with depression, when you're coming off this high point and, and you seem to be rapidly going down into this low point, you need to stop and rest. Yes, amen. And as he was resting, God loved him so much he had an angel this time bring him something to eat. If you remember, before he had the ravens drop it off. He had them dropping off some fish sandwiches or some chicken sandwiches before, but this time he made him a little bit of a cake. And he put a little jet and he put a little jug of water right there. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Think about in the, in the middle of the desert. Where did the angel get a jug of water from? But God can make the things appear that are necessary to resuscitate you in your situation. <laughs> and then it must have been a very filling cake because he did like we do on Thanksgiving. He ate and went on back to sleep. He went on back to sleep. 
And the angel came again and touched him and said, you need to eat a little bit more because this journey is a long journey. It's too great for you if you're on an empty stomach. So he eats, and, uh, and it says that he had enough strength to move for 40 days. Boy, oh, I wish I had a cake that would give me enough strength to go 40 days. Now, I want to point out, baby boy, go to verse number, number eight. Can you see it? And it says he arose. Oh, hold on. Are we there? Okay. And he arose, ate and drank, and went in the strength of that food 40 days and 40 nights to her up the Mount of God. Now, I just want, if you're not paying attention, you might miss this. So I'm going to stop us so that we can pay attention so that we know what this is. Another name for her up is Sinai. Now, let's talk about Sinai just for a little side note. Sinai happened to be the spot where this other guy was walking, taking care of some lambs, some sheep for his father-in-law, and he saw this bush that happened to be, I think is on fire. Yes, but what happened was, after he took the sheep out and did all this stuff with them, he comes back, that thing's still burning. He said, that's an awful long burning. Let me go over here and check it out. And he found out that he was on the Lord's hill. And that he was to be the deliverer of the people. Yeah, this is the same place. Elijah is going back to where it all began. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's going back to talk to the Lord to find out what's wrong with you, Lord. Why you let this happen? Depression will try to isolate you and try to put you in this position whereby you feel all alone. But as David said, I can't go nowhere without God being there. Isn't that one of them sayings that mothers used to say? I can't go nowhere without these cheering. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I ain't heard too many fathers say that, but I hear mothers say that a lot. <laughs> I can't go nowhere without these cheering. That's how God was. That's how God is. God says, when you think you're in the darkest dark, I'm standing right there smiling because I'm the lightest light. Because he just does that thing. When you call into his kingdom, that means he's going to be where you are. Amen. But he gets on this mount, the, the same place that the children of Israel went and stood around and, and got the law. This, this place where it's so magnificent of how the presence of God is here. How is it that Elijah, in the midst of his depression, runs to the place of the Lord? It tells us a little bit of something. When you're depressed, when you're feeling like you're isolated, when you're feeling like everything is going crazy, seek the Lord. Yes, Find him because he's never too far away. Amen. Old folks had a, had, a, had a song said Jesus is on not one of the secondary lines, but he's on the main line. And you should just tell him what you call him up. Tell and tell him what you want. And then they got happy about saying, call him up, call him up. They call him up, call him up. And tell him what you want. Amen. There's a young man on TikTok that my wife and I like to listen to. And he'll have something in his hand. And he'll say, hello, is this heaven? Whom am I speaking with? John? Which John is this? He said, John, is Jesus available? <laughs> Hello, Jesus. He, oh, man, we love that guy. But, and, 
And that's just the relationship that you should have that no matter how low you are feeling. Listen, you can be in a depressed state. You can feel like you're isolated. You can feel like there's nothing that you can do. But I just want to speak into your mind and your spirit right now that God is still right there. He's still standing beside you. Even though you feel you're all alone, you're never alone. There's an old saying that, that they tell addicts is that the feeling only lasts for 90 seconds. If you can make it past the 90 seconds, you can overcome the addiction. And you're feeling in despair, if you can just overcome the feeling and say, I'm going to call on the Lord while I still can. Amen. Anyhow, he, he goes into a cave. He's, he's, he's in this place and he's in this cave and they believe it's the same cave that Moses was in when he asked God, can I see your face? And God said, no, son, you can't see my face, but I'll let you see my backside. <laughs> Bless you again. And he says that it is the same cave, and he's in this cave. And this is what I like about Elijah. This lets me know how depressed Elijah was. If we look at verse number uh, 10, he says, I have been jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I, am only left, and they only seek my life to take it away. Now, Elijah, 44 days ago, Joker, <laughs> you was on the hill with, with victory. Mm -hmm. But when depression shows up, depression makes you forget about the victory. Uh -huh. Depression makes you think that you all alone. There ain't nobody but you. You the only one going through this. You, you, and you know it ain't nobody gonna help you. Don't nobody love you. Don't nobody, and you just taking it on. Now, if you drop down to verse number 14, what does Elijah say? The same as that he got it rehearsed. It is in his mind, it's in his spirit. Lord, I'm the only one. Everybody else done gave up. They just left you hanging, God. But don't Oh, Lord. <laughs> he's sitting there and he's, oh, I'm the only one, Lord. Lord, I'm the only one. <laughs> and we can see that he's, he gets into this circumstance whereby the Lord says, stand at the mouth of the cave. As he's standing at the mouth of the cave, a strong wind. Now, think about this. The wind is so strong that it's tearing up the mountain and broke pieces of rock. That, boy, that must be a cat six hurricane coming up through there. But it says the Lord wasn't in the wind. The wind was just something that happened. The Lord wasn't in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. The earth starts shaking and, 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 and things start getting topsy-turvy and all this the wind done caused some things to change. The earthquake done caused some things. But the Lord wasn't in either one. And then it says a fire comes. Now we already know Mount Sinai is known for fire so that's something that's going to happen over there. But the Lord wasn't even in the fire. The Lord says, you see all this show, you see all these things going on, you, but not that ain't, no, that knows. that's just, that's just the setup. That's just a perception. That is just a perceived thing. But let me talk to you. And the significant point that I want to bring out of this is he had all this going on, and it says, not just a whisper, but it says a low whisper. When somebody's whispering to you, my wife says, I don't have that ability, so I, I don't know. She says, you don't know how to whisper. I say, I'm whispering right now. She said, that ain't whispering. But anyway, when, you, when somebody whispers towards you, 
our first indication, our, our first thing that we want to do is we want to get closer. Then we want to turn our hearing apparatus toward the voice. So we're no longer focused on seeing, we're focused on hearing. So we see that not only was the voice whispering, but it was a low whisper. And so it means that you have to mentally block out all the wind, all the earthquake, all the fire, all the voices, all the people, all the things that are You have to block it all out so you can hear the whisper. Sometimes we do not allow ourselves mm -hmm. to hear the whisper. Come on. Yeah. We have to find that place where we can say, Lord, I hear you. I hear you. Come on, sir. Yes, God. Thank you, Father. And I'm listening. Now, I'm not telling you that things are not going to try to jump back in there and try to block you, but that's why you had the wind going, he had the earthquake going, he got the fire going, he got all this going on. But it says the Lord wasn't in all that. He wasn't in all the things that you could see. He wanted you to hear. Because when you can hear, then guess what? Then you can see. One of the things that we were taught in the, in the infantry is sometimes you turn out all the lights when you're on patrol. And you allow your ears to attune to the quietest silence. And when you attune your ears to the quietest silence, you can hear movement, you can hear animals, you can hear anything. Because your ears help your mind to image what it is hearing. Uh -huh. So as we are watching this transpire, he hears the voice of the Lord. And he, he says, what are you doing? Here? And he says the same, that boy still says the same thing. I'm the only one. And the Lord says, okay. This is what you, bless you again. This, this is what you need to do. Get yourself up. If you notice, God did not address how he was feeling. God did not address what he thought happened. God said, all right, what I want you to do, I want you to go to Syria, the enemy. Not even one of my chosen countries. And I want you to go anoint this man king. What? Okay, okay, all right, all right. Now, I want you to go and find Jehu and anoint him king over Israel. Then, I want you to go find your replacement. And then, we'll go on from there. Because you've done your part. And now it's time for you to transition into your next part. He says, and oh, oh, and, 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 and as he's walking away, he says, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I just wanted to let you know, there's still 7,000 other folks that have not bowed their knee to Baal and have not kissed his hand. So go do what I told you, and you and your depression, depression will drop off you as you go do what I told you. And we sometimes look at the Lord like, but Lord, I'm still feeling lonely. Lord, they still not acting right. Lord, Lord, Lord. And then what, y'all remember these sayings. You go to your parents and you say, but, but, and they say, do what I told you to do. Along the way, uh -huh. 
I believe that once he realized what the Lord told him, as he was being obedient to his renewed purpose, that depression realized he lost his grip. Because he realized that no matter where I go, the Lord is with me. The Lord is with me. The Lord, he's with, can you imagine him walking in the Syria, the enemy? I need to talk to the king. He says, I'm a prophet of Israel. I've come to let you know that you're going to be anointed king. And them Syrians looking at him like, I don't even know why we don't want to kill him, but okay, all right. Then he walks out of there. He walks over to Jehu's house. He says, hey, Jehu, do you realize you're going to be the next king? Come here, let me oil you up and get you all oiled up. You're going to be the next king. Yeah. And then he's walking around. He had to be walking around this guy out there doing the, um, uh, what's that, plowing. And he says, that's him. He takes his cloak off, slaps it around his neck. He starts walking off. Elisha's like, oh, wait a minute, I feel different. Yeah. Runs down there and says, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm going to follow you. He says, all right. He says, but I need to go ahead and, 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 uh, and celebrate my family first and let them know. He goes, he had 12 oxen. See, uh, Elisha wasn't no joke. Mm -hmm. Do you know how hard it is to keep 12 something in a row so they do right? He was a strong old joker. He killed all 12 of them. Use the plow in order to set a feast up for everybody and say, hey, this is my going away feast. I'm going to be a prophet. Yes, sir. In the middle of the wilderness, Elijah listened and heard the whisper. Where does the whisper come from in the middle of the wilderness. There's nothing there. However, comma, no matter where you go, God is there. No matter where you be, guess what? There he is. Let me read this to you one more time and then we're going to call it a day. Where shall I go from your spirit, or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. Amen. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand shall hold me. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, for darkness is as light with you. Why did God whisper in the wilderness? Because he didn't have to holler. He didn't have to holler because he's always there. And he desires for you to attune your ears to the voice. A lot of times we get wrapped around the first thing we hear. The message is you're going to die. And so you try to run away. You try out of your own effort to make things happen. Mm -hmm. And the next thing you know, then you're tired and you're trying to rest, but you can't rest because you're thinking about the, the, the message that you got. So you run some more and then you, 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 you don't want to eat because you don't feel like eating because it, it just don't, uh, I'm just so frustrated and I just don't know and I'm, I'm feeling so all, all alone. But in the midst of that, I think God was talking to him the whole time. But he had to get to the point where he was refreshed enough and away from all the other noise that he could hear not just a whisper, but the low whisper. And the low whisper said, I'm not focused on what happened. I'm not even focused on what you're thinking. I want you to focus on doing the next phase of your life and your mission. The funny thing is, just, just hit me inside the, the head. Jezebel said all that nonsense, and Elijah never died. Yeah, she sure did. Isn't there something? She did. Yeah, she, oh, okay, I, I want to talk about her right now because she got done dirty. But anyway, what I want us to walk away with is, God is always speaking. Amen. But we have to get ourselves into a place. Sometimes we have to find a wilderness, a desolate place to be in. 
in order to hear him clearly. Now, I'm not trying to tell you to leave your husband or your wife and go hide somewhere. And I, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying find a place where you can hear his voice. Because even in the middle of his, the wind, the earthquake, the fire, and all that, he was still able to hear God's voice. Amen. I don't believe, I know some people say, this happened, this happened, this happened. I think it was all happening simultaneously. And even in the midst of that, he heard the voice. Amen. And God spoke to him and launched him on to his purpose. All right? If you are going through a level of feeling despondent or depressed right now, I want you to know that God has the remedy for you. The remedy that God has for you is hope. Because depression, desolation, what it tries to take from you is the hope that things will get better. And God has an eternal hope for you, and that can only be found in Christ Jesus. So what I'm saying is in order for you to achieve this, that you must have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is the key for us to have the hope that will cause us to always know that God is always there. And the process of this occurring in your life is quite simple. The Bible says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And what that means is, is that if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be rescued, delivered, saved. What is it that you're being rescued, delivered, saved from? You're being rescued, delivered, saved from the penalty of sin, which is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. If you desire, if you know that you need Jesus in your life, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. It says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. It is a declaration that you make, and then it becomes a heart condition in which you follow after. Now, this is the one thing that I want you to understand about all this. That this is not an individual sport. This is a team event. And we are going to come alongside you and assist you along this process. And we have made up our mind that no matter where you are in the world, we're going to assist you in this process. With that being said, if you have accepted Christ today, and uh, desire to have us assist you along this journey, which is what we want to do. I want you to email us at info at godshousecc.com. Let us know that you've made that decision. We will respond and assist you along this journey. Additionally, if your email don't want to work right, you can text us. <laughs> you can text us at 864 920-0100, let us know, and oh, let me say this, this is only, if you call it, it will not accept your call, it's only a text line. But if you text us, we will get back with you, we will help you along this journey, because our desire is for you to have the fullness of what God has for you. So that even in the wilderness, you can hear the voice of God, because it's just a whisper. Amen. 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 Well, friends and family, that's episode number two in the books, The Wilderness Whispers. I hope that we have said something today that will attune your ears to even when you think you're in that desolate place that you can still hear the voice of the Lord that will cause you to go in the direction that he will have for you to go and that you will be fulfilled, refilled, energized, 
and do it in a manner that will give him glory. All right. Well, until next week, episode number three, God's blessings be upon you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.